All right, what's going on, everybody? Just like that, it's another fine live stream from the ocean. Uh, man, we're way out east. Yeah, we're way out east. Uh, the day after the 4th of July. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five. Well, the thumbs are a little nubby, but those weren't from the fireworks. One, two, three, four, five. I got all ten fingers. How did you guys do? You make it, uh, you make it out all right? You got all your digits after the 4th of July. Let's say hi to Jester. Good morning, sir. Good morning, John Quartz. Good morning, Open Squad. Yeah, I still have all my fingers. All right, there you go. Uh, that's a, that's good news. Uh, Spawny, what's going on? We got Nick. We got Michael. Good morning, GH. Good morning, Michael Marvin, it looks like. Agent Smith checking in. We got the oh, Cast Iron Kyle. Cheers to Cast Iron Kyle. I haven't seen you in a, in a moment, my friend. But uh, we had a glorious 4th of July. You don't have to work today, right? That's why I slept in. I'm like, they don't have to work today. So we could all sleep in a little bit, right? You're not getting ready for work, are you? Please tell me you're not. It is FU Friday, by the way. So if you have anything crazy you want to get off your chest, something that pissed you off this week, throw it in the chat and we'll get to it. That's for sure. All right. Richie Rich with Who the Man? Well, Richie Rich, Who the Man? Today, the day after the 4th of July. Uh, I'll tell you someone that's not the man, and that would be uh, Mr. Biden. I don't, I don't feel like calling on President Biden anymore because I don't think he's running the country. I think somebody else is, and I don't think it's Obama. Uh, it's someone high up in his, uh, in his cabinet that is doing the day-to-day -day stuff for the Biden, I think, and then they drag him out. And they're like, could you just wish the nation a happy 4th of July? And then he grabs the mic and he goes, ho, 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 happy 4th of July. So I would say that uh, Mr. Biden is not the man today. Who is the man today on July 5th? You know what? Don't stump me this early, Richie Rich. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. We'll figure it out. What's up, Sarah? How are you? Uh, SEAL Team 6 check it in with the Street Fighting Man starts playing by Rage Against the Machine. We got an old Opie and Anthony fan. Right on, brother. Uh, string Bikinis, that's your FU today, Spawny? Probably not, right? I think you might have just got caught up in the crossfire. Maybe you were talking about something else, and then I asked for the FUs, and you throw String, bi uh, string Bikinis at me. They are a little weird. The only reason I say they're a little weird because uh, 80% of the ladies, look, the ladies are allowed to wear whatever the hell they want. It's 2024. If the, if the ladies want to wear a penis, they're allowed to do that nowadays. But <laughs> it's been my experience on this beach that 80% of the uh, people wearing the string bikinis have no business wearing a string bikini. But look, man, whatever floats your boat, I don't know. I just find it weird. There's no one in my uh, in my circle or my family wearing the string bikini, you know. All of a sudden, the mom trying to look hot with the string bikini, and she has to bend all the way over to, you know, put suntan lotion on her kids. <laughs> it's just awkward and weird for everybody, I think. I don't know. Maybe I come from a hoity-toity time. But when I was growing up, I didn't think I was hoity-toity. I thought my, my dad was the hoity-toity and his generation was the hoity-toity. I thought I was the cool generation. But now maybe I'm the hoity-toity because I'm looking at these string bikinis thinking they look ridiculous. Joyce, good morning. Ope and everyone, good morning. What's up, uh, Joseph? What up, Ope? All the digits are still intact. Cheers, bud. Man, we saved uh, no less than two to three hours of traffic to get to the local fireworks display. We had a glorious day, a long beach day. We fished, we caught nothing, we swam, we had a few beers. And then we went uh, we went pork loin and uh, chicken thighs on the barbecue because uh, we roll up to our, uh, our butcher at 12 o'clock. No, like 12.10. My wife did, actually. My wife and my mother-in-law. And they were closed. I'm like, why would you close on the 4th of July when you got all these people crowding into this tiny little area for the 4th? They all want to barbecue something. They're all looking for the good burgers and the good steaks. And they closed at noon. I thought that was weird. I think at that point, you look at one of the employees that, you know, just simply don't care. 
and you go, hey man, you want to make a lot of money? I'll, I'll pay you three times your your salary for today. Uh, I just want to stay open all the way until the sun sets because these people are going to be coming all day long for their for their meat. But wasn't the case. In the parking lot, uh, my wife said that there was like five or six cars, so they all had the same idea. We want good steaks for the 4th of July. So then they had to just go to the regular supermarket and get a pork loin and some chicken thighs. But man, we did it up right. It was absolutely a phenomenal barbecue right on this table that I'm sitting at right now. Oh, no. Oh, no, it wasn't phenomenal. I forgot. Wait a minute. I did forget. And I've talked about this over the years. So... All the houses, obviously, out here at the ocean, they're all in a line. And at the end of the day, uh, the seagulls, they use the roofs, I guess, for the wind resistance. I don't know. But it's basically their their highway, and they all fly this way for the night and camp out. There's, I think there's some land over there that's wide open that, where they don't get bothered. So right around, uh, I don't know, 7 o'clock when the sun is kind of looking like it wants to start uh, laying down, uh, the seagulls come one after another <laughs> right over the houses. It's, it's an awesome sight. I, I've been meaning to uh, film it because I think it would make a pretty damn good video. And we're eating uh, our, our dinner. I mean, we got everything. We got salads and shrimp cocktail and the... And the um, and the pork loin and the chicken thighs and just and the food was just endless. We got our drinks. We got some nice uh, yacht yacht uh, rock music going on in the background, courtesy, courtesy of the stupid Sirius XM. And we're really enjoying the hell out of it. And half the table is, is kind of protected. And the other half is out in the open like I am, right? So my father-in-law is sitting right here. I mean, literally right here. And... Uh, all of a sudden, we're just talking and laughing and enjoying our food, and we hear a splat, like a really loud splat. That's pretty much it. I think I just nailed it. I think I could be Michael Winslow with my sounds. And all of a sudden, we look up, and my father-in-law's in a, in a bit of a tizzy. Uh, he's a little confused. He's a little bewildered. And uh, he's, he's looking at his, uh, his food and his pants, and he just got sprayed by a seagull as we are eating last night. <laughs> but the weird thing is, he was at the corner here, right? My barbecue's another, I don't know, 15 feet that way. So the, the seagull unloaded starting at the barbecue and it's like, a boo, 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 And it ended at my father-in-law. Um... If the seagull continued, he would have wiped out our entire table of food. And then we would have went back inside and been all mopey. And, and we probably would have had to put a frozen pizza in the oven. But uh, it only took out my, my, my father-in-law. So. And yeah, he got another plate and he was fine in the end. But the seagull dive bombed us during our 4th of July barbecue dinner. And then uh, we... Uh, and then, it, you know, it was fire time, so I went down to the beach, and, uh, you know, there's just a ton of uh, Amazon boxes under this house, just a ton of stuff to burn, dragged it all down to the beach, set up our chairs, and all up and down the beach were just fires and families and friends just enjoying the hell out of each other, right? And then... Uh, Instead of being in a car for two hours to go to the local fireworks display and hopefully find parking, and then as soon as the grand finale, everyone runs to their cars, and now you're stuck in traffic on, on, on the 4th of July, we just turn to our left, and man, I want to thank my neighbors about five or six houses down. Oh, the local police uh, warned all of us. Like I said, we all have them on speed dial, so they texted all of us and basically said, we don't want fireworks on the beach this year. I guess... Somebody lost their phone in the ocean and did not get the text message because right five or six houses down was just a, a glorious fireworks display tapping out, um, um, not uh, uh, ending, I should say, ending a, a fine, a fine Fourth of July. Uh, we we just had a blast. I hope you and your and your family had a blast as well. The British voters are demand. Oh, the British voters are demand. Yeah, they got something done over there. I don't even know what it means, but. Uh, Opie's all right, uh, right? Uh, I guess Aldo's not on his medication today, so let's uh, put him in timeout and put him on the clock to completely ban him. 
The group doesn't like the Aldo. I've been trying to hang in there with the Aldo. We'll see how it goes today. Jesse Ventura is making a comeback. All right. All right. Jason uh, Pierre Paul is the man for blowing part of his hand off about a decade ago. Well, who the hell is Jason Pierre Paul? We're going to give him demand uh, uh, 10 years later? I don't think so. We need someone current for who demand. And we also need your FUs on this uh, this fine Friday. Uh, what's up, Bo? What's up, Chris? I'm honestly very tired, Chris, if you need to know. We, uh, we, we did it upright yesterday. And then I got out here to set up the live stream. And, uh, wow, it rained overnight. I had no idea. Every, I mean, everything is completely soaked. We left everything out, blankets and towels and... Just everything is soaked. I got everything hanging over there for now. Hopefully it'll dry out. Our seat cushions that aren't supposed to get wet, they're wet. Uh, Off from work today, thank goodness. Hope everyone's enjoying uh, great leftovers for lunch. Ooh, I like that. We're going to make some pork. uh, We're going to make some pork loin sandwiches for the beach today. Uh, You know, my in-laws are from Philly, so they brought up the... They brought up the Philly rolls. Oh my God, Philly! The Philly rolls are just ridiculous. We think in New York we got a good roll, but man, when my in-laws come up with the good stuff, it I, I can't wait. We're gonna cut the pork loin nice and thin. We might have some mozzarella or some monster cheese. Put uh, put some of that on there. A little lettuce, a little to, uh, tomato. Uh, some uh, some uh, some mayo, some salt and pepper. Oh, it's gonna be so good! It's gonna be delightful. Uh, Mike Berger Jr. Good morning, open the pod squad. GGH still have all your digits? I sure do. Ignore the thumbs though; they've been stumpy since I was born. That wasn't a fireworks accident. A lot of people go, "Oh, you poor thing, man! You're you held on to that M80 a little too long, huh, kid?" No, I was born this way. Thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> the other problem is I, I like telling you all the local garbage stuff. Cast Iron Kyle just gave me four ninety nine. Holy crap! Everything is so expensive. I wish my dad could start a church to make his kids use a tax exempt form. Tell the story, oh Well, man, I could tell the story. When I was growing up, I was part of a church. Oh yeah, I was brought up Catholic. I was brought up a little Catholic boy. I, I wasn't touched. That I know of. Relax. I knew you were. I know you were thinking it. And then my dad's like, you know what? Why go to that church when we could have our own church? <laughs> like what? Well, all right. So we're starting our own religion. Yep. All right. Where's the church? It's going to be our house. What? So way back, I think this was the 70s. Do I have to go back to the 70s? Late 70s, early 80s? I don't know. My dad, he was an entrepreneur for real. Uh, For real. That's why I like the Shark Tank. Because it it reminds me of my dad. My dad was always wheeling and dealing. Trying to figure out the next big thing. So, you know, I I grew up uh, very, very poor on Long Island. Seven, eight, nine kids. But every once in a while, my dad would hit. And we would have money for a very short period of time because, you know, he would have to try to pay some shit down. Um, but anyway, um, he uh, he learned from his buddies that, uh, hey, man, you start your own church, you start your own religion, you know, the government can't come after you as much for taxes. So he did it for tax-exempt purposes. But we were our own church. We had tax forms. Uh, we weren't supposed to pay for taxes on pretty much anything, and we're just little kids, and uh, if we left the house with a little money to buy something at the stationery store, my parents were like, make sure you take your tax exempt form, and you show them, and I did show the people uh, every once in a while, and they would look at it like, what is this thing? We don't pay taxes, because we are children of the Lord. We are children of the of the quad. <laughs> they would look at us like, get, get out of here, you idiot. And then I got so humiliated that I stopped taking my tax exempt form around to not pay taxes. I just I couldn't do it. But my dad swore by it. I don't know. I also know my dad one, one year basically said, uh, 
don't hold it against me, IRS. You've, you've already audited me a couple times over the years. We're good, right? We're good. We're good. Um, but one year, my dad just simply said, uh, you know, um, federal federal taxes are illegal. And he chose not to. <laughs> he chose not to. He chose not to pay him one year. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how that worked out because they try to keep some of this weird shit away from us us kids. Oh, boy. Uh, but, yeah, we were a church of uh, cast iron cow. We were exempt. We were the children of God. Uh, Joyce Collin, hi, no. One more thing to keep track of, LOL. All right, I, I, all right, all right. Uh, Ford uh, F-150s, worse than any M80, especially if the idiot owner decides to drink. Horrible world S. Well, damn, are we getting our FUs uh, rolling? All right. We can get our FUs rolling. What's up, Bob Lord? Good morning, damn. Truck broke. Have to run for parts soon. Oh, that stinks. Absolutely stinks. Um, I, we fixed the thermostat, by the way. Uh, breaking news. We fixed the thermostat, so that's good. There, there's an update on that. Uh, I was hot wiring thing, and, and it was working, but we finally got a new thermostat in. We fixed the front door with the, uh, the doorknob that rusted off. That was good. Uh, what else did we fix? We fixed the vents, and then like uh, I had a guy. I had I had a guy. I have a really good friend. He he actually uh, built my house out here, and then we became friends. But he sent one of his guys over to do a a day's uh, a day's work, and we had some and we had some weeds out front that really needed to be taken care of. Just some weeds, you know, and some other things in the house, and uh, and I, uh, I I looked out the window to check on the weeds being uh you know uh taken care of and i i see the guy he's just ripping up all our shit <laughs> he, th- he thought he thought i said get rid of everything <laughs> he's ripping up all my shit oh my god i ran out there like no 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 and then uh and then I, I and then I you know I called my friend I'm like ah oh, dude I could never be mad at you obviously we're really good friends and this guy is taking care of me and my family beyond beyond where he needed to ever take care of me and my family he's just a good solid dude and he's like ah oh, man and and I'm like I, I go I could never ever be mad at you I just want to let you know that's not what I wanted he's ripping up everything giant bushes and plants and beautiful lavender bushes and then uh. And uh, I, I checked on the guy like 20 minutes later, and he was uh, he was trying to he was trying to put the plants back, and he watered them, and they're just very sickly. So we're hoping maybe some of them will come back. I don't know. It's kind of like when you're losing your hair, right? And uh, after a haircut, you're like you see all the damage up there that's starting to happen, and you take a handful of hair and you kind of place it back, hoping it's going to grow, grow back. That's kind of what he did with my. My plants and my shrubbery the other the other day. TMC, the Don, did you do the barbecuing over? Yes, of course I did, TMC. You can't have a house at the ocean and not know what you're doing on the barbecue. Of course. And I got some pointers from the Carl Ruiz over the years. Did a lot of basting. A lot of soaking. The chicken soaked for almost a full day. And all sorts of like, uh, we, we did like a, a, a whole bunch of spices and an Italian dressing for the uh, chicken thighs. And Carl, Carl slapped a, a chicken breast out of my hand one day. He's like, will you, will you knock it off of this stupid chick, chicken breast crap? The best part of the chicken is the thighs. So, man, especially with the barbecue, I, I, uh, we barbecue up the chicken thighs. And, man, are they tasty. Absolutely tasty. The Vinny knows chicken thighs, most flavor, only way to go. There you go. They did something with the chicken breast. I don't even think you're eating chicken anymore. I have no idea what's going on with the chicken breast, but man, that's not the chicken I remember when I was growing up. All right. Good morning to open friends. So good to have another day off. All right, what's up, Milt Miranda? So I got an FU. Yeah, you know what? Let's do the FU Friday. I got the uh, I got the FU. It's it's to the garbage company out here. We pay stupid money to get our garbage uh, taken away, you know, every every week. And what pisses me off is we don't you don't get a break, you know. I try to come out here 
a lot off season, but the fact is, uh, from November to May, almost five, five six months, the garbage uh, company doesn't have to take any garbage away. Really, we'll fill up a, a garbage can maybe, maybe once, maybe twice in the off season, maybe because we, you know, it's very little garbage on uh, when we're out here off season. So we got, we got, a, I got a full house right now. We got a lot of people here. And uh, the garbage is piling up. And I saw the guy, because they do different days, I guess. So I saw my company rolling rolling right by my house. I run out with two bags like this. Can you do me a favor? I'm, I'm in a complete panic because I got garbage. No joke, everywhere. Everywhere. I don't have enough garbage cans for the garbage that is piled up because we, you know, we have uh, people out here. Um, so I'm running out. Can you do me a favor? And in my mind, as I'm yelling, can you do me a favor? I'm thinking about the hot coffee I have brought out to these guys. The Gatorades in the middle of summer when they're sweating their balls off. Handing them cash around the holidays where I hear the truck and I run out with a little cash. Here you go. Here you go. Here's here's a, a, a hot cocoa because I happen to be making it for my kids. Here's a couple of hot cups of hot cocoa. Summer, to, you know, when it does get really, really hot, I'm running out there with the Gatorades. Oh, my God, you guys got to be dying. Oh, we are. Thank you so much, sir. So I remember all that as I'm running yesterday with my garbage bags. Can you do me a favor? I'm in a complete panic. I run up to the guy. I go, hey, can I just throw these two in the back? You know, I'm I'm the guy. I, I live right there. You know, the guy that gives you the Gatorades and the coffee and the, you know, a little this section. Oh, uh, we can't do favors. We can't do favors. You got to call the office. Got to call the office. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Remind me of Cigar Man when I gave uh, the guy that uh, takes care of my car in the city uh, some cigars. And then when I finally needed a favor uh, from him, he had no favor, no favor, no favor. So I called the office and I'll tell you something, man. After uh, being on hold for uh, 15 minutes and talking to four different people as they're uh, sending me here and there and everywhere. They're like, look going to cost you $45 and we'll come out there and we'll take two garbage cans of garbage. I'm like, what? I'm like, you know, off season, you guys don't even, uh, we just give you money. I go off season. We just give you money. Like there's like there's no service. No one's here. You guys go up and down the road like this and you know that, you know, it's a joke. You're not getting anyone's garbage because no one's out here. And I'm one of those people. You drive by my house week after week and you don't have to do anything. So you're telling me no favor and it's going to cost me $45 so you could come and and take two cans of garbage away. Yep. I said, all right, thanks. I hung up because here's the problem. Like I would have done it in a second, but $45, two cans. I'm still in the same boat with a ton of garbage laying around. So we got we got a construction site nearby. We're just dumping it in their dumpster. And guess what? It's the same company. <laughs> They're building a house. And uh, we're like, oh, look at this dumpster right out front. Well, that's what we're going to do. So, you know. Well, allegedly. I Allegedly. There's no proof I did that, allegedly. Uh, what's up, Leslie Larson? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What's up, Vincent Scaramuzo? Cue the hacky relative. That's good luck if a bird shits on you. No, no, it's not. No, he, he's from Philly. He was he was ready to flip shit. No, he's a good guy. But it was hilarious with the seagull just dive-bombing our, our 4th of July dinner. And my father-in-law got all... He got all of it. It, it didn't hit any of the other... Food or my mother-in-law who was sitting in this seat, just him. Opie, happy belated four cheers, my buddy. Yeah, Jeff Jones, it was the last one. I hope uh, hope you guys went all out. We sure did. I guess next year they'll tell us what what you do on the Fourth of July because now we're living in a monarchy, right? So we'll uh, we'll see what the new rules are. There'll be new rules. 
I mean, maybe Biden gave us a hint because, you know, he grabbed that mic and he went, ho, ho, ho. Happy Fourth of July. So that's good. Hey, uh, hey, 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 dumbbell. Hey, hey, it's the Fourth of July. Everybody watching this right now is is kind of drunk. They've been drinking all day. Can you think you could just take this mic and go happy 4th of July and then give the mic back to Kamala Harris? Who, by the way, introduced uh, Biden as uh, the vice president, I think. Or slipped and sort of said it. I don't know. And then he grabs the mic and he goes, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> we all need to put on our helmets, man. Between now... And the election, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Hi, Tim. How are you? Uh, Joseph, your father-in-law is DA, man, for taking one for the fam. I just, uh, and then I, I told him, I go, well, that kind of happens. The, the, I think the seagulls do it on purpose. I really do. Because I've been, I've, I've been hit. I've been hit. I've, I've sat in this chair just chilling out. Um, and I got hit because, like I said, they just fly right over the houses for wind resistance or something. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, Mike Testa, I hope you happy Friday. Yeah, we got a random rainstorm last night also up here in Boston. Yeah, I had, I had no idea. The last thing my uh, my wife um, my wife asked me as I was getting ready for bed. Uh... Sorry, I'm just giving the link to, to uh, Fish Guy Photos because we have an update on the drone people. Uh, man, I was very, very surprised. Chris gave me an update on the drone people. He should be calling in in a second. We'll finish with that. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, yeah, my wife's like, uh, is it going to rain? I'm like, I don't think so. We're just on the beach. It seemed... And, man, I woke up this morning. I mean, everything is soaked. It, it must have really, really poured uh, Mike Berger Jr., GGH, isn't there a new comedy quick hits out? There it, there sure is, Mike, there sure is. It has its own podcast feed, Comedy Quick Hits with Opie. Go get it. You're driving around like a like a knucklehead in the next couple of days. It's giving you something to, to check out, all right? All right, here he is. Chris, Fish Guy Photos. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going, Opie? How was your 4th of July? A late night, that's why I'm up a little late this morning. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't meant to join you earlier, but uh, what you, just what'd didn't you happen. Do? What'd you do? Hang out with some friends, crap beers? What'd you do? Yeah, I had friends on the North Shore, on the Sound, and we uh, they had a nice little party, some food, some beers. Good times. Nice, good times. I, I started late, too, because I, I assume that most of these people have good bosses that uh, you know allow them to take Friday off. Yeah, I'm off today. Candy had to work, though, so she had to go in. All right. So uh, Chris texted me um, yesterday because he heard the podcast where I was talking about the the guy from Maryland that walked down the beach. It's on a it, it's on the podcast feed if you missed this one. But basically, we were fishing. Guy comes down the beach, says he's from Maryland. He's trying to get the lay of the land, asking us about bait. Pretty much asking about uh, fishing licenses. Do people check if you have a fishing license? All this stuff. What can you get off the surf? Blah blah blah. And after all that, I said, uh, hey, man, you guys can fish with us for the day. So next thing you know, they leave the beach and they come back like a parade. They had boxes and 15-foot rods and jet it was co coolers and everything. They set up about 50 feet away from us. And in one of the boxes was one of those drones where uh, they take up, uh, you know, a full mackerel. And the drone takes it up. It's attached to the fishing rod. And then this drone takes the bait about 220 meters out into the ocean and drops it. They did that three times. The drone could only make four trips, uh, Chris, four trips because of all the, the power it needed for the rigging on the, on the line because they had heavy-duty stuff. They had giant hooks, and the leader and everything had to be really, really heavy. And then the bait, obviously. And, uh, and they fished all day with us, and they only got – one sea robin off a regular rod that they didn't use the drone for to put the bait out. And uh, it was fun watching them. And I've seen the videos online with the drones that bring the, you know, the, the bait out into the ocean. And then you texted me and, and, and tell these people what you told me. 
Yeah, so those guys were definitely shark fishing. You know, they weren't they weren't looking for striped bass or bluefish. They were shark fishing, and uh, that is now well, sort of always been kind of illegal, but now it's it's a little bit more illegal uh, to surf fish for sharks in New York. And um, the problem is, the three species that they're going to encounter from the surf are your sand tiger, your dusky, and your sandbar. And those are prohibited species, which means not only can you not keep them, you're not allowed to target them. Um, and when people shark fish on the beach, they're pretty much targeting uh, prohibited species. And the problem is with those species, their numbers are down really low. And they just don't handle well to release off the beach. You know, look, I'm a, I'm a big fisherman. You, get, you know that. And I'm all about catching big fish. But when you see like a fisherman catching like a sand tiger shark from the surf, Dragging it by their tail, up the beach, out of the water, on the sands, pulling its head up, doing all the macho picture type stuff. Just like you, you said the other day, just when somebody catches a dogfish, everybody goes nuts and gathers around. Well, if you catch a four or five or six foot shark from the beach, it's a circus. And then that shark doesn't go back right away. And then it ends up you know, dying because we then get the call like two or three days later. Hey, there's a dead sand tiger shark washed up in the beach, you know, and then we go and pick it up. And more times than not, it was one that was still had a fish hook in it or you know had signs of being you know handled like that so this is this last year the dc uh made some new rules and one of the rules is you're not allowed to deploy a bait from the beach with anything but a fishing rod so that means you can't paddleboard it out kayak it out drone it out uh you can't use hooks i, I don't remember all the I'm a little, it's a little early right now but i don't remember the hook size but you can't use a hook size of a certain size you can't use a leader more than a steel leader more than 18 inches so they're trying to really just limit how many people are targeting these uh, species from the beach. Wow, I had no idea. I mean, most people would be like, "Good, they, you know, they took one one shark out of the uh, out, of, out of the ocean." Because uh, most people are petrified of the, the sharks, obviously, in the summertime. But uh, no, it's important not to not to hunt the sharks. You know, and the thing is, you know, everyone's like, "Oh, well, it swam away." And- you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time, you know, prior to my job, current job, you know, I worked at a public aquarium where I was in charge of shark exhibits, and we would, I was in charge of not only feeding them, but collecting them, and uh, I know what they can handle, what they can't handle, and, you know, just because it swims away doesn't right. mean it survives, you know, so it's one of those, uh, yeah, and they, again, dragging it out of the water, and again, most of the people that are doing it are doing it just for the show, you know, they're right. not doing it because they want to catch a shark, because if they were, they would catch the shark. Do what they had to do quickly and let it go, and it would probably at that point be fine, you know. Yeah, when they approached us, uh, you know, something felt a little fishy, um, and because we we were bragging about the striped bass that we have caught off off, uh, you know, um, right in front of my house, whatever. And one of them was a giant, just a massive four foot striped bass, uh, maybe even maybe even bigger than that. And we showed them the picture; they didn't care. I was like. Wait, aren't you out here to get what we're trying to get? And then, stupid me, I didn't make the connection. And here's the, here's the kicker. So last night we're down having a beach fire and watching fireworks uh, about five, six houses away that way, and uh, and they were they were back, they were back with their drone. So I marched down there. I said, "Hey, this is illegal." Chris told me. <laughs> Yeah, they probably they were looking for a beach where there wasn't many people, you know. Um, yeah. Because like, you know, if it's at a public beach these days, they will, you know, somebody will probably, you know, the D.C. officer looking for, you know, checking fishing and stuff will we'll give them a hard time, so. Right. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they were back and they were doing some uh, some uh, night fishing with the drone, so. Uh, yeah, they're, look, they're looking for sharks. They don't care about striped bass. Yeah, they were looking for the sharks, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so you had a, a good Fourth of July there, uh, Mr. Chris. Yeah, it was great. I was hoping to get my uh, friends that are down visiting. I was hoping to get them out fishing, but like you said, the weather uh, kind of turned. I wasn't expecting uh, to wake up to fog and rain this morning, so we're going to get right. a little bit of a late start. Uh, can, see what happens. But I think it's supposed to get worse as the day goes on, so we'll see. Can I? I got to One more thing. I got to put it to rest. We've been focusing and obsessing about the piping plovers <laughs> could you just walk me through the piping plover thing because it doesn't seem like it's an extinct uh, bird at this point you know they're, well, they're, they're putting up fencing up and down the entire east coast to save these damn things and it seems like there's plenty of them now well let, let me let me ask you a question first 
If they were shutting the beach down and putting up fences for sea turtles, would you have the same problem? No, because I love sea turtles over the pipe and chlorus. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, my friend. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, because you go to places like North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, and whatnot, there's, you know, beaches that are shut down because of sea turtle nesting. There's fences all over. And, you know, you might be able to look at it like, wow, there's fences everywhere. These things are all over the place. But doesn't mean that they're, you know, not endangered or not, you know, threatened. It's, you know, our, our, our look at something is a lot different than the big picture. You know, and that's that's what ends up coming down. You know, and the thing with the plover, yeah, it's a small bird. It's, it might be insignificant to you or to the rest of the people, but it's one of those things. It's a bird, and they, you know, they were facing problems. And one of the things is they live in areas where it's disturbed. Right. You know, they don't like a really thick dune. You know, with a lot of dune grass and stuff. They they want to actually be out in the open. So if the dunes are all nice and built up, they're going to go down on the beach where we are. You know, and that's that's where it ends up happening. But like I said, it's one of those things where it's. You know, it ends up because it's just a little bird, you know. But I guess if, if it was sea turtles, nobody would care. Nobody would mind. Everybody would love it and cheer it and, you know. But is the, is the piping stuff. plover very important to our, to to nature in general? Again, let me ask you, is a sea turtle, how would a sea turtle be? Right. You know well, what I mean? Well, it, but there's, a lot the, of things, there's a lot of things that we just don't end up seeing, you know. We don't. We don't see the big picture. Uh, you know, they're there. They, they serve a purpose. They eat stuff off the beach. Um, they're food for other animals. You know, everything has a has a has a role. I mean, I even I'll bring it up because I know you uh, you talked about it the other day on the uh, the live stream was the uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. You know, mosquitoes suck. Literally, right? They 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 ruin a good time. They bite this. We would they, we've tried to eradicate them for for many 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 years. But honestly, if we were successful in eradicating them, there's a lot of other species that would be negatively affected. There's a lot of fish. Birds, bats, all sorts of animals that feed on mosquitoes. Chickens. So if we were to eradicate mosquitoes, we would see a ripple effect, you know. But again, to us, it's like it's a mosquito. Who cares? You know? Right, right. But it's again, it's, it's, it's all, they all serve some sort of role. Well, so back in the, I, I talk about this uh, story from time to time, but off of Falmouth in Cape Cod, um, my friend, an old friend, I haven't seen him in many years, but he he he, uh, he ran the comedy connection up there in Boston. I, I I would see him from time to time, and he would always show me a damn good time. And one day we drove to this beach, uh, Road Ends Beach, somewhere in the Falmouth area, and then we look out and there's a, a private island that you could rent from Massachusetts for a hundred years. You can't officially own it, but you could like lease it or something for like a hundred years. They'll allow that. So the guy that uh, owned uh, this little island at the time was in charge of the big dig in Boston. So he had crazy ass, ridiculous money. And he was the one, I, I've talked about this, where he came and picked us up. He had one of those boat cars. So it started out as a car coming down this little hill on his private island, jumps in the water, comes across, rides right up on the beach, picks us up, and we go back to his little island, right? The one thing I forgot to tell the people, and you said mosquitoes. He had a guy that was working pretty much around the clock trying to eradicate the mosquitoes on his island. That's how much money this guy had. The, and the guy that was trying to do this, he had giant barrels with something that was attracting the mosquitoes to get them into the barrels. And he would wear a complete uh, beekeeper's outfit because there were so many mosquitoes on this goddamn island. And uh, this guy was convinced he could eradicate the mosquitoes on his little private island. I know. It's stupid, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You can bring the numbers down with certain stuff. But, you know, even in the past, historically, when we did that, you know, that's why we wiped out eagles and osprey and peregrine falcons. It was all from spraying DDT, which was to kill mosquitoes. Right. You know, and the effect was it you know, I pushed some of those birds almost to extinction. Right. Um, you know, so it's, it's one of those... And we'll never win with the mosquito thing. And again, like I said, they are a crucial part of our local ecosystems. You know, it's just, uh, yeah. they, like I said, they just suck. So if this guy comes back with a drone, should I march down the beach for real and say, Chris told me this is illegal? You know, I, I was just telling you for uh, your own thing. I don't, you don't, you know, you don't need to be a Karen. I mean, it's up, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be a Karen. <laughs> no, I appreciate you told me because, uh, you know, he basically is like, hey, you guys want to, you know, try it out i i was i almost i almost fooled the drone but we were just watching chris we didn't do anything else nothing <laughs>
I was awesome. just giving you some news on that one, just just as a heads up on it. But uh, yeah, no, I appreciate. It. I, I'm, you know, I I would have no problem, you know, with people catching them. The biggest problem is the people that that are out there catching them. They're just doing it for the show. You know, you right. can go online and you see these people that are that are catching them. It's they drag them out of the because you know the law is also like so. Let's say you catch one while you're you're striped bass fishing. You know, because you can't you can't tell the shark not to take your bait, but sometimes they do. Right. So if you were to catch one of these sharks, again, the way the law is written is you can't, you're not supposed to remove it from the water. You're supposed to release it as quickly as possible. So let's say they go down and they're like, oh, I'm just blue fishing. You know, and all of a sudden they got a giant hook and, you know, yeah, all this yeah, stuff. You, like, know. you know, but then the problem is when they catch one, they pull it out of the water completely. They put it up on the sand. They take pictures with it. That's not getting it back as quickly as possible. No. So, you know, so, but that's but that's what happens with all these things. Because then you know everyone's around them, like you said. Oh my God, a shark! There's sharks in the water. It's, right. It's, 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 it gets to be a serious. But then a lot of these people feed off of that, and they're like, Oh yeah, look what I did! I caught this, and it's like, just get you caught a fish, dude. Like let it go. You know, if they just caught him, and let, I have I have friends that that do target sharks from the surf and and do it right, and you know those sharks are probably fine. They they're doing it just because they want to catch something, you know. And, right. Uh, you know, but it's it's the other audience or not the audience, the other group that gener- that that you know, they're doing it just the wrong for the wrong reasons. Well, fishing has become annoying because every time you pull out, especially a dogfish, uh, nickname uh, sand shark, they look so like it is a, so it what? is a true shark though. I want to correct you because I heard oh, you say right. the other day it's not a shark. It is a true shark. All right, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but it doesn't have any teeth. Is the key? That's why they call right, them right. sand sharks. And um, anyway, when you pull one of these out of the water, it's pretty impressive. And sometimes they're like three, four feet, and the and the people come from all over. Oh my god! Can I can I take a video for my Instagram? It's just like oh, they're just so annoying. I'm like, it's a stupid fish that we hate catching. We just want to get this back in the water and maybe get the good stuff. Yeah, but they. Yeah, and that's and that's, and that's, and that's to the point. Imagine when it's a six foot shark or, or bigger i mean it's sand tiger can get you know eight foot you know yeah, of so, course yeah and, and one other thing about the piping plover is it has to be said if they tasted good if they tasted good we would not be uh saving their ass if they tasted good they'd be completely gone already yeah of course they would like i said it, i just you know Look, I don't live on the beach, so it doesn't inconvenience me too much, you know. Um, it inconveniences me in some places where I can't get on the beach where I used to go, but I just go to a different beach. So, I, you know, for me, it, you, know, you don't have that option, I know, I know but... No, um, it's... I don't... In the end, I don't care. I just like making fun of the stupid piping plovers because it's insane what they're doing to try to save them. And I think yeah. to myself... It, you know, it's an old Dennis Leary bit, which means it's possibly a Bill Hicks bit. Um, somebody out there gets that. But anyway, uh, Dennis Leary talks about how we only save the cute animals. Why aren't we saving the rats? Aren't the rats important somehow at this point? What about the pigeons? Why aren't we yeah, saving but, the pigeons? But there's a lot of them, though. <laughs> right. No, the fact is humans only save the cute stuff. The cute stuff. Yeah. If you're ugly, you're fucked in nature. You're yeah. fucked. All right, buddy. I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate yeah, you, you doing this because uh, the drone thing was really, really interesting. And I learned something. I had no idea that was all illegal shit now. Yeah, and again, just in New York, there are other states that that doesn't have a, ro- a rule. You know, there are other states where there are sharks that they can legally target and catch from the shore. Right. Um, but just here in New York, the three species that they're primary, most likely catching are just prohibited. So that's why they... Try to tighten up the regs, but um, right on. Yeah. All right, cheers. All right, man. Well, hey, enjoy your enjoy your weekend. Cheers. We'll uh, we'll catch up soon. Hey, I'm uh. By the way, I'm speaking uh, Thursday at Uber Geek. Ooh, next Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday, July 11th, I'll be at Uber Geek. Uh, the festivities start at seven. I'll sorry, probably start talking around eight o'clock. I'm giving my wild Long Island talk. Ooh, Chris is a good talker, and that's a good time at the Uber Geek. I've been there, and and you got yeah. Get I think we got a pizza. We got pe- a pizza truck this week, so it's going to be right. one of those like handmade pizzas. Oh, oh pizzas. nice. Yeah, they 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 mix up the food trucks, and the beer is damn good at Uber Geek, and uh, and you got to come over here so we can have a couple crafts. Yeah, man, we'll do it. 
All right. Thank you, Chris. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. You Bye. got it. My buddy, Fish Guy Photos on all the social media. All right. We're going to go. Guys, thank you very much. Plug-in. Oh, plug-in is so stupid. Look, the mantra is simple. I like doing the live streams. I now put the daily live stream on my podcast feed, OP Radio, so you can listen to the audio in the car, because you don't catch the whole thing. I understand that, but it's in about 20 minutes from right now, it'll be sitting there so you can listen to it. That's important to me, because that gets me a few uh, a few bucks through the advertising they throw on those things. And, uh, you know, if you want me to continue daily live streaming, just do something. Hit the like. The fivers help. You want to throw me a fiver, that's great. You know, if I gave you 30 plus years of entertainment and you can't give me a goddamn fiver, there's something wrong with you. Oh, sorry. No, if you want to give a fiver, it's up to you. (laughs) But hit the like. And uh, the new one is just click on something. I will be uploading stuff off and on all day today. Just click on something. Okay? All right. Uh, Maybe tomorrow. If not, guys, we will talk very, very soon.